What's up guys? So in today's episode, I would like to give you a plan of action as to how you could grow your business. Uh, might have touched on it a little bit before. <clears throat> you don't have to do it this way. It's a possibility you might take different steps, but this is exactly how I would set up my company if I was starting from zero and I saw myself before I started. So that I, this is what I would tell myself. Okay, <clears throat> step one, you're gonna get a virtual reality game truck. You're gonna run that thing for a year straight. You're not gonna concentrate on anything else as far as other types of businesses. You are only going to focus on the virtual reality game truck. Why? Why should I not bring other elements into the business my first year? Because you don't wanna lose focus. Because uh, your lack of experience and based on just human nature of curiosity and trying to do too much will pull you away from the one focus, the backbone, the spine, which is going to set up the foundation. That's the virtual reality game truck. Once you operate the virtual reality game truck business for a year and you really push it, right? Not sugarcoating anything. I mean, really pushing and concentrating on it. Then you add a photo booth, right? With that one photo booth, you take it out with your virtual reality game truck for the next three to four months, and all you do is print pictures free of charge for everyone, just free, 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 right? And what you do is, of course, on the bottom, you put your number, virtual reality game truck, so four, like three to four months, nothing but free pictures. After And of course, with that, start going into uh, the wedding uh, venues with the virtual reality game truck and use the virtual reality game truck as a piggyback for the photo booth, right? In order to take that photo booth and split it into a secondary business for your entertainment company, right? Because in the end, if you wanna, if you really wanna progress, you wanna go from a video game truck business into an entertainment company. Once that is done, I would then hire a tech or I would train a game coach, right? Someone who has a vehicle to not just know how to run a or help run or drive a virtual reality game truck, but also how to operate a photo booth. So now you have two separate venues, right? So whether you hire that person as a contractor or whether you hire that person as, uh, as an employee, you know, that's up to you. And I'm not gonna get involved with that because there's different state laws and things like that. That's, that's, that's your decision to make. Once I have that photo booth and that virtual reality game truck, now that I have these two things, I would look at my market and I would ask myself, okay, based off of this, do I add another photo booth or do I hold off for a little bit and add another video game truck? For me here in Los Angeles, I would add a second game truck. And then with that, I would then add a second photo booth. The way I would move, and, and it's, it's a little difficult to tell as to the movement of the speed, because you can't be like, yeah, this is what's gonna happen on exactly this, 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 and day. But I would do uh, video game truck, photo booth. Video game truck, photo booth. And then you get to understand your market. So if you are operating in a market, in a city, let's say that has about a million people, you have two video game trucks, you are good. I would not go past two if there's about a million people. Uh, you could, but what I would do is I would have two video game trucks or two virtual reality game trucks. And I would then start pushing photo booth, five, six, seven operations. So what you're doing now is your entertainment company is growing in a matter where you have a heavy backbone, which is the video game truck, the investment that other people really don't want to make when they get involved or, or, or get started with the business. And of course, the more investment that you make, the less competition you're going to have. So you have this, this backbone that's driving your business and now you're piggybacking all these photo booths and now you're getting into, you know, quinceaneras. Uh, again, if, if, you're, if you're like in Texas or uh, Los Angeles, uh, you're getting into weddings and the photo booth is a lot easier to manage uh, you have a lot more people working for you. How are you going to set pricing and all that good stuff? Again, that's up to you. That is your market. You have to know what you're doing. I mean, I could train you like on, on that aspect as well. But again, that's that's just, just looking at things uh, very broadly. Now, once I have my two video game trucks and my four to five photo booths, your operation has now grown, right? Uh, and let's say if you're working with photo booth, it's personal opinion. Again, the state laws. It is a good idea to see, you know, should you hire a contractor for a photo booth? Because now, you know, you could, you're going to need probably some help managing these things. But 
with, with that, with the five photo booths and the two trucks, you, you're going to be able to position yourself. Here's another thing that happens when you now have seven operations or even let's say three photo booths and two video game trucks, five operations. You are building a marketing machine where you are omnipresent. You are everywhere, all the time, all over the place. With that, you could find out what else does your market require, right? For example, uh, if you go to, let's say, some auction websites and you're like, man, I want to get me a jumper. I'm not going to get a jumper in LA. We're swamped with jumpers. But maybe you're somewhere where you don't have that many uh, companies who are in the jumper business. Uh, and even though I personally am not a big fan of jumpers, but because I'm biased, because I'm in LA, maybe it's going to totally work for you. So now you could start getting, uh, because you have these three, four techs that work for you, you know, on photo booths, you'd be like, hey, do you also want to uh, set up a jumper? I'll pay you extra on top. All you got to do is drop it off. You teach them how to set it up and then they got to pick it up. So you are sprawling slowly, but consistently, right? And this is how you grow your uh, entertainment company. Maybe you want to get involved with laser tag. Again, I am not the laser tag guy. Uh, that is something you have to really do your own research on. Uh, for example, I know there's a lot of company that offer laser tag stuff. Uh, again, I'm not going to get too into that just because it's not my cup of tea. But if your market demands that, then again, you need to look into that. And so what am I now going to give you the advice um, that is a crucial element? Before you grow your company, can you operate your virtual reality game truck for one year without focusing on anything else and make a profit because if you can do that then you're gonna set yourself up for success but if you try to do 10 different things at the same time you are not going to be focused and you know in, in today's society the average you know the average American looks at their phone for three hours right so you need to like put the phone down and focus right now if you're looking at your phone because you're marketing on your phone for three to five six hours a day then that's a different story but, but you really need to focus on driving your business and building the backbone. The inability to build your backbone within your business is going to screw you, right? If you have these big plans for growing an entertainment company, you need to be patient and you need to work. Don't try to jump to step 50 when you haven't went to step one. So you want to grow an entertainment company? Start with the virtual reality game truck. You're going to have a great backbone to start on in comparison to your competition.